Hello everybody. I'm Jim Daly, President of Daly Manufacturing, and I'm coming to you today from our factory in Rockwell, North Carolina. We'll be talking about brain optimizations in a little bit, um, but first of all we have some news uh, and updates. Every month we're doing a training that we're having live with our employees to help them serve you better, but also we're trying to put it on the internet. Uh, we have broadcast live for about a year now doing this just with audio. Now we're wanting to get the video on there too as far as people being able to see me. Now I would like to first of all mention some new products that we have. Uh, next slide. Uh, okay and also some new information. Uh, we have now website online ordering available for you. We have that available for stores and as well as just about anybody can go on and order. Now if you're a store and you're wanting to order online you'll need to contact our office and get set up for that. And so we look forward to hearing from you. We're not trying to keep you from ordering uh, by phone. We really love talking to you. However, for some people it's just not convenient. So we really would like to uh, make this available 24-7 so you can order when you need to, if you need to. If you don't, you know, by all means call in, ask questions, and talk to us. Now, we have two monthly specials in February of 2018, Ocean Elements and Coactive Thiamine. These are relatively new products. The Ocean Elements, you can see here, is a, a new product that contains from various sources, mostly from the ocean, calcium, magnesium, vitamin D, and iodine. So this is a really good supplement for all-around mineral supplement. It also has lots of trace elements in it that are not there in specific amounts, but they're there and they can really do a lot of good for you. We also have Coactive Thiamine, a new product on special this month. Now Coactive Thiamine is a little bit like our activated B vitamins, except we have both the active form and the regular form of it. And that makes a lot of sense for thiamine because the uh, thiamine mononitrate actually converts pretty well over time to the active form. However, it does take time. It takes some processes by the liver. So if we give you the active form, which is very expensive, thiamine uh, pyrophosphate, 10 milligrams in here, you have thiamine ready to go immediately in your body. But over time, the others will, the other thiamine, the mononitrate, will be converted. So it has a lengthening effect, sort of a time release effect uh, for your own body. Also, it gives you the active thiamine at just about the same price as what you would expect to pay for just a normal thiamine. So you're really getting a good value that way. Now, we don't do that with all of our B vitamins that are activated because some of them, it's better to get it activated right from the start. But this works well for thiamine, and thiamine is an important uh, mineral for uh, nutrient metabolism. Especially people who are alcoholics really need this product. Alcoholics tend to be very low in thiamine. It appears that alcohol actually prevents the absorption of thiamine from the gut. So you want to give it to them at a time when they're not drinking, but uh, it will be, it is something they really need more of, and that's very well documented. We had a newsletter come out recently. If you're not getting that, you need to get with us and make sure you do get it. We don't put these out often, usually once or twice a year. We're gonna try to do twice a year if, if we can. But when we do, there's lots of good information in there for you. So make sure that you are getting the newsletter. And if you didn't get one recently, then let us know and we'll send it to you. Uh, In-store training and seminars. This is something that is available to uh, stores, especially stores in the area. We can do it very easily. 
and we'd like to get uh, stores involved with that. We can come in, maybe do one of these monthly trainings if you're really close. Uh, that would mean all of our uh, employees coming too, but <laughs> that would be okay with us probably. Uh, but at any rate, we can come in and do these programs uh, just like the one today for you and your customers if you would like for us to. So, you know, talk to us about that. That's something that's um, available if, if you want it. Now, we also have new products coming up. Uh, they're going to be uh, dealing with things like dementia, obesity, and many more health challenges. We will be talking about one of the new products coming up uh, that's for brain health and to, and to hopefully prevent dementia uh, today. We don't have a name for that one. We're kind of leaning toward Brain Builder. Very simple name. But if you have some uh, ideas that other people aren't using that would be a good name, yeah, let us know. We're still uh, working on that. We don't have it quite ready. I've got the formulation ready but we haven't gotten it made and we don't have a name yet. But uh, Brain Builder may be the one. Now let's move on into our uh, main topic and that is the human brain and how to keep it healthy throughout the lifespan. The human brain is unbelievably complex. Uh, you can see from this illustration, lots of neurons, lots of, uh, of uh, connections lighting up. The neurons in there are connected to astrocytes, microglia, all kinds of cells uh, working in concert. Now, we know that the brain has the ability now to regenerate in a couple of ways. One is to actually make new neurons. That's something people didn't realize could happen until just very recently. Many parts of the brain we know can do that. The other way is to uh, make new connections. You see all those little arms protruding out from the balls. Those are neurons going out and connecting to other neurons. Well, when you lose a neuron, the brain can actually make new connections to other neurons and keep on going if you don't lose too much of it at one time. That's an area of really intense research at the moment, and we are just learning more and more about that. And I really hope that we can learn a lot more because there's a lot we can do to preserve the brain as we age. Go ahead. Now, the brain is highly energy uh, hog, really. Uh, it uses a lot of it. Right now, probably at least 25% of the energy produced by my body is being produced in the brain to keep the neural activity going. The, um, brain uses primarily glucose. However, uh, it also uses ketone bodies and a little bit of fatty acid, not much. You can see on that bottom part down there is what they call a PET scan, a positon emission tomography scan. And you can actually see which parts of the brain are lighting up and where the energy is being used. The blue parts are not using so much right now. The red and yellow are using lots more. However, some parts of the brain seem to cause more problems as we age than others. And that one of them is not the hippopotamus, which you see there, no. It's the hippocampus. There are actually uh, two hippocampi, and let me just show you my brain here. Okay, here we go. The brain uh, the hippocampus is located down underneath here, uh, and that's the part of the brain that's responsible for spatial memory, uh, for converting short-term memory into a longer-term memory. It's the part uh, that really starts to deteriorate uh, the fastest when people begin to develop Alzheimer's disease. It's not responsible for motor function. And some of you may have realized that lots of times people with pretty severe Alzheimer's disease can sit down and play the piano beautifully if that's what they've done their whole life. You may have seen this special on um, television about Glenn Campbell who was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. And he was quite severe, couldn't remember the names 
of his children, could remember who his wife was, and yet he could pick up the guitar and play beautifully. So there was memory there that was probably what we call muscle memory in that, yeah, part of the brain may not be just up in your head, but actually part of the um, um, muscle and nerves that go throughout the body. Now, I put the hippopotamus there for a reason. The hippopotamus, believe it or not, is probably the most dangerous large animal in Africa. We think about lions and we think about crocodiles and elephants, and they are dangerous. But the only animal in Africa that actually causes more deaths than the hippopotamus is the mosquito, which gives people malaria. So the hippopotamus is very dangerous, but that's what really makes your hippocampus kick in gear in a big way. Uh, it's kind of a fortunate uh, a naming coincidence, I think, but uh, that fight or flight response really kicks in if one of these guys are coming after you because you know you're in trouble. So you'll do everything you can to, to get away from him. Your stomach shuts down. Much of your body functions that are temporary shut down, that are not needed for this fight or flight response. And think about it. You don't need to worry worrying about digesting food if you're eaten or trampled by a hippopotamus. They won't eat you, but they can bite you in half uh, with those big mouths. And they do that to people. So this fight or flight response that the hippocampus has also carries over in our daily activities because the hippocampus is really uh, very sensitive to cortisol, the stress hormone. And we know that stress hormones are, can be very damaging. They cause us to gain weight. They can cause us to probably develop uh, dementia. And that's because of the link with the hippocampus. So what do we do that really hurts the brain? Well, there's a lot of things that hurt the brain. Age is a major uh, factor for dementia, uh, the biggest one, actually. Lack of sleep has actually been diagnosed as Alzheimer's disease when the people just weren't getting enough sleep. They had sleep apnea. But that brings on symptoms that are very similar to Alzheimer's disease. Noise pollution has been shown to be very damaging. In fact, a recent study in mice showed that the mice could actually regenerate uh, brain cells when they were given two hours of total silence uh, to recover. So that was kind of interesting. This, you know, the noise pollution is bad for our brains. Inflammation anywhere in our body will end up affecting the brain. So if you have chronic inflammation from arthritis, that's not a great thing. So you need to, to think about how to work with that. Impaired glucose metabolism. People sometimes today are calling Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes. Now that's not really an accepted term by most scientists, but a lot of the people are using that term because uh, there's a linear relationship between the development of dementia and blood glucose levels. Bl elevated blood glucose levels well below what it takes to be diagnosed as diabetes can actually put you at risk for Alzheimer's disease. Poor circulation, and the obvious one is stroke, can really damage the brain. But you know, a lower level of poor circulation can as well. Essential fatty acid deficiency. You know, the brain is just full of fat. We're all fat heads, let's face it. Uh, but it's a very fatty tissue. And those fats are important for neurotransmitters. It's important for a lot of things in your brain. And it's important for preventing inflammation that does a lot of damage. So that's really uh, a critical thing to uh, make sure you're getting enough of those essential fatty acids, mostly Omega-3 fatty acids are what people are deficient in. It's possible to be deficient in omega-6 fatty acids as well that are essential fatty acids. Other nutrient uh, deficiencies, 
calcium deficiency, vitamin B12, vitamin D, all are critical factors in uh, brain uh, deterioration. Calcium is important inside the neuron, actually transmitting the uh, signals. B12 is important for preventing brain deterioration. That's been shown that, uh, very clearly in an article in the uh, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition a few years back. Vitamin D has also been shown to be uh, very critical for the brain. And then poor gut bacteria. You know, this is probably the hottest area of research today in nutrition and, and in human health period. The relationship between the intestinal tract and the brain is becoming clearer and clearer. And actually, I experienced sort of uh, that kind of phenomenon many years ago. Uh, most of you would think that a, if anything's all in your head, it would be a headache, right? You know, we <laughs> uh, well, a number of years ago, I went up to visit my in-laws in Wisconsin and felt this horrible headache and neck ache and everything. I was miserable. I went to the doctors. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They were trying to test me for meningitis. No, nothing showed up. But I had that horrible headache. Finally, I just went back uh, to my in-law's house, and I got to thinking, you know, I haven't had a bowel movement since I've been up here. You know, I'm constipated. And I wasn't sure if that was the connection, but I took a rather direct route to getting rid of it. And I, my headache instantly went away. So my headache was not in my head, it was in my gut. And so that's probably true of a lot of brain problems, that they're not originating in our heads. You know, we don't need brain scans necessarily, MRIs and CT scans of our brain, because that's not where the problem is a lot of times. Now, we don't know. It could be. Sometimes it is. But there's lots of other places throughout the body that cause issues with the brain. Now, what do we do to protect our brains? Well, there's a number of targets out there that we can really look at. An interesting... Uh, sort of emerging area of research is telomeres. These are little strands of DNA on the ends of our chromosomes. And they get shorter as we age, uh, as, as, uh, the, as we have our cells uh, dividing. And they get shorter and shorter, and that may set us up for some problems. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Also neurotropic factors, brain-derived neurotropic factor, nerve growth factor, insulin-like growth factor. These growth factors help our brains to uh, stay healthy, help us to develop new neurons if we need to, new connections. There are uh, approaches to increase the activity of these neurotropic factors. Uh, the sirtuin deacetylase uh, enzyme, SIRT1 in particular, may be very beneficial for our brains and for aging in general. So that's something that we are looking at uh, constantly. Uh, blood sugar regulation we've already talked about, very critical for maintaining a healthy brain, something we have to target. Uh, brain inflammation, like we said, the gut metabolism, and methyl metabolism, the methyl-related um, nutrients like vitamin B12, folate, choline. Uh, we could throw B6 in there as well. But these are things that all are targets to help us protect our brains as we age. Now let's go back to telomeres a minute. We have a diagram here of what telomeres look like in a way. Uh, it's sort of expanded a bit, but you see that green uh, strand of DNA coming off the end of it. That will get shorter and shorter each time a cell divides. As it gets shorter, uh, it, seems, uh, it seems to start impairing the division of the cell, uh, some of the activities 
of the chromosomes. Uh, the new cells seem to work less efficiently as the chromosome gets shorter. So we think right now that this may be a link to aging itself and to staying younger as we age. Now, this is emerging research. We can't say for sure it works that way, but it's very interesting uh, concept. And let's go to the next slide. Now, as I said, it's an intriguing area of research, but we're not quite there to say that lengthening them will extend life in humans. Uh, however, there is a telomerase enzyme that does that lengthening, and it may be involved in preventing some of these age-related diseases. And if you really want to learn more about telomeres, Dr. Dean Ornish, who's a fantastic researcher in my opinion, actually does a little talk on YouTube, and I really encourage you to uh, go to that link and listen to the talk on YouTube. It's very informative uh, and worthwhile. Uh, as it turns out, there's a herb that uh, helps increase telomere length, and it's ashwagandha. It's one of the best ones that I know of, and it enhances the telomerase enzyme activity in HeLa cells, it's been shown to, which makes the telomeres longer. So the HeLa cells are an interesting cell line that was, uh, came from Henrietta Lacks, who died of cervical cancer back in 1951. Uh, and it's been used a lot in research, so it's a very well characterized cell line. And we'll move on to the next slide now. Ashwagandha is known as Indian ginseng. Herbalists classify it as an adaptogen it's a member of the nightshade family, so if you're highly allergic to those kinds of plants, you might be careful with ashwagandha. It's in the same family as tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants. And some people appear to be allergic to that. Uh, not many, but some do. The roots are the part that's normally used, although the whole plant may be used, because the with annelids, which are what you're looking for in the ashwagandha, uh, are th really all through the plant. Okay. Uh, we've seen that uh, telomerase is extended uh, with the use of, of uh, ashwagandha with, with, uh, woo, with, with afferin A kills cancer cells with and without telomerase. Uh, it protects against beta cell amyloid plaques, ashwagandha does. Also protects against sleep deprivation. The harmful effects of sleep dep deprivation seem to be modulated uh, and reduced by taking ashwagandha. So there's a lot of benefits to ashwagandha. Now resveratrol is another very good anti-aging uh, supplement. And I didn't really buy into resveratrol for a while because it research was initially only done in cell studies in little petri dishes and that just doesn't go quite far enough but resveratrol is found in the skins of a number of fruits uh, blueberries grapes mulberries raspberries a lot of different ones in response to injury it's commercially obtained from giant knotweed most of the time although there's some other sources of it too it's believed to be responsible for the benefits of the mediterranean diet and it can help lengthen telomeres. There's research to support that, okay? Resveratrol is beginning to also accumulate evidence in human research in just the last five or six years. Uh, concerns about poor absorption seem to be offset in these studies that are showing that it really does have beneficial effects in people. And a number of studies have evaluated the effects now on the human brain. Uh, the first one, though, we're going to talk about is not the human brain, but the rat brain, because it shows the mechanism a little bit better. In these uh, fisher uh, rats that are spontaneously uh, memory deficient, when they were given 40 milligrams per kilogram body weight of resveratrol, they actually were able to swim better in the water maze test. Now, if you look down at the bottom there, you can see, uh, if you look carefully, 
the lower black dot in that round circle is a rat swimming in water that's been colored with um, powdered milk. And if you look up at the top, they're actually showing the platform he can swim to and get on it. Now, they'll lower that platform down a little bit when they do the actual test and you won't see it. However, uh, the rat will swim around until he finds the platform and then he'll get on that platform. Now, after he's learned where the platform is, they wait uh, anywhere from a few weeks to a, a few days to a week. They'll put him back in and see how long it takes him to find it. They'll put him at the same place. The platform will be at the same place. And if he has good memory, he'll swim to it pretty quickly and uh, he'll find it. Now, if you look in the top right hand corner of the graphs over there, we'll just go over one of them. You'll see that uh, the blue uh, on the left, and we'll just look at one slide here. You can look at the rest of them more carefully later if you want to, or look up the uh, report there, the references there. But uh, you'll see the blue in the middle top uh, graph, how long it took him to find it the first, uh, after being trained and taking resveratrol. He found it really quickly. He got on the platform. The red one took much longer than one without resveratrol. So that's a really nice way of studying memory in rats. It worked very well for improving memory of these uh, rats that develop uh, Alzheimer's-like symptoms spontaneously. Okay. Also, however, uh, in people, uh, it works. And, but first, we'll get to the rat. This is more of that same rat study, actually. I'm sorry. Uh, they then took a look at the brains of the rats to see how they were affected. And you can see on the top uh, right-hand side, sort of a cartoonish uh, illustration of the neurons. Uh, and actually, they saw the same thing with the microglia and the astrocytes, very similar. But you see that there's a, a central part of it and then the branching off of it. Not very many branches on the top one. That's showing a poor neuroconnectivity. Now, down at the bottom, you see lots more branching and connecting to other neurons uh, in that slide. So here we see not only was the behavior improved, the the uh, ability to memorize how to get to the platform, but also they could show that the neuroconnective uh, neuroconnectivity in the brain was improved by resveratrol. Resveratrol uh, significantly improved memory retention, also in people, and we'll uh, show right here that the neuroimaging. Uh, shows that resveratrol improved memory retention. And this graph, the baseline shows that the resveratrol memory retention scores were actually a little bit lower than the placebo group. But at follow-up, the resveratrol group had actually improved their memory scores, while the, the uh, non-resveratrol group had decreased uh, their memory scores. So a very uh, profound effect in older adults in this case. And I really encourage you, if you want to learn more, to actually look up these studies and, and read about them. Uh, they're, uh, I think these are both the two we just showed. I think they're available on the internet free of charge. That's not always the case with studies, but I believe these two are. Now, what else do we know can affect the protect the brain. And macular pigmentation uh, and cognitive function have been shown to be linked. Uh, two researchers, Rohini Vishwathan and Elizabeth Johnson, found that well, there was actually a correlation between the pigments in the eyes and cognitive function. Well, what are those pigments? Well, they're carotenoids. Lutein, zeaxanthine, uh, beta carotene, uh, perhaps astaxanthine, uh, but these kind of pigments not only protect the eye, 
but they protect the brain. And so they showed that people uh, with a higher pigmentation in the eyes actually had better global cognition, better verbal learning and fluency, better recall, better processing and perceptual speed. So these are things that really can practically help. Now, if you're taking iVite right now, you're getting a lot of brain benefit. And I'll just show you the iVite product. If you're not taking it, it's one I recommend. It's actually quite good. Uh, but our new brain, brain builder formula, and I think we may end up calling it brain builder, we talked about it earlier, is something that has the same pigments in it, but some of the other things that we've talked about, the ashwagandha, resveratrol, and things like that. So you may not want to take both products, but one or the other uh, would certainly be beneficial. And let's move on. Uh, another thing that we know really helps uh, is the vitamin B12. Now, vitamin D B12 is uh, very much associated with homocysteine levels being increased. And we can see from this study critical levels of brain atrophy associated with homocysteine and cognitive decline. So when people had elevated homocysteine, which is almost always associated with too little vitamin B12 and folate, they had brain atrophy and cognitive decline. That's important. And not getting those vitamins, you know, will really damage your brain. Uh, the Vitacog study, which is this is reporting, actually showed brain shrinkage by up to 53% more. Cognitive decline, 50% more. So these nutrients are just unbelievably important for protecting your brain from uh, degeneration with age. Okay. Now we know that inflammation is also very damaging. Now well, there are a lot of things that we have to help you with inflammation. And that's good for your joints, it's good for everything in your body. But your brain, absolutely critical. And if you look uh, particularly at the yellow bar to the far right at the top. We've got a whole list of things that can help with inflammation. Uh, Omega-3s, fatty acids, curcumin, boswellia, tea, cocoa, can. Paractin is a, something that actually acts on rheumatoid factor and brings down inflammation. Corsetin is wonderful. Sulfur compounds and MSM and garlic. These are great things to prevent inflammation. And we have that as part of our EasyFlex. And it's a, a great inflammation product to bring down not just uh, inflammation in the bones and joints, but inflammation anywhere in your body. InnerCell also does that. And this is a product that uh, follows the research of Dr. Bruce Ames at the University of California Berkeley with a few tweaks. Now there are many other products we have that can really help a lot with your um, your brain health. Relax evening formula. If you're one of those sleep deprived people this is something that can help and go a long ways. As you start getting your overall health back together you may probably will not need this and the relaxed daytime formula too for people who are stressed out during the daytime. These are very beneficial, hopefully ones that you would only need for a while until you get your health back, but they are wonderful if you need them. Um, Vascumin for circulation we were talking about, great product. So one thing I'd like to point out to you is these little brochures. A lot of the uh, products we have, we have these small brochures made up that really give you a rundown of what the product does, how it does it. Also tells you on the back uh, the size of the capsule, what's in it. A lot of basic information. This is something quick and easy for you to look at, get the major information you need, and a great thing if you're a store to hand to a customer and say, just take a look at this product. It may be just what you need. 
So I really encourage you to, to use these as a resource. And finally, I'd like to say we here are Seventh-day Adventists and we have a long tradition of interest in health. And this is one of the books that I read many, many years ago for the first time. And it's sort of been a, a book that I followed um, throughout my careers in, in health. So Nature's Seven Doctors, and if you really look at these things, fresh air, good nutrition, pure water, sunshine, exercise, rest, and a, the power of the mind, as he would put it in this book. That could be prayer, uh, trust in God. You know, for some people, it may be meditation, relaxation techniques, things that help us be at peace with ourselves and to relieve stress. And I use these as a, a checkpoint when I talk to people because just giving a bottle of vitamins to somebody often isn't enough, or, or even herbs or other things. If you're not getting what you need in all of these seven different areas, you know, you're not gonna have optimal health. So many times we want to just go down through this checklist and say, are you doing this, what you need to in this area? And with that, we're going to wrap it up. I hope this is something that will benefit you. I look forward to talking to you on the phone. Uh, do get one of our newsletters that I mentioned earlier in the talk. This is what it looks like. If you haven't gotten this newsletter, by all means, give us a call. Send us an email. You, you need to have it. And you have a wonderful uh, rest of your day, and we'll talk to you next month.